Welcome to what is just an introduction video. Before we embark on the main course content, there's a few things, a few really important things I need to cover in this video. Um, I didn't really want to put it at the front of the first video because that's kind of wasting a bit of space for that. So I'm doing it here. Uh, the main and the most important thing is the fact that there's going to be two courses running at the same time. From 2016 onwards, there's going to be two Edexo courses as they phase out the older course and phase in the newer course. This set of videos is for the older course. And then the newer course is being introduced uh, in September 2016. Uh, so I'm covering the Edexcel, the older Edexcel course from 2016, uh, 2013. Uh, this is the logos you'll see. Pearson's the parent company, and Edexcel is kind of their brand. But you're seeing Pearson appear quite a lot more often on the exam papers. This is the front of an exam paper. You'll see it's two hours long, but I'll talk through that in just a second. But the most important thing is that, um, as I say, from 2016, this is just a graphic taken from just an Edexcel document on the website. From 2016, they're introducing the new course. So the DOV, every couple of years, they reform certain GCSEs and computer science had that done this year as I'm recording it. And so Edexcel have to adapt and redo certain things in their course. A lot of it's the same, but certain things are different. Like there's two exams in the newer course, there's only one in this course. So I'm covering for one that has exams in summer of 2016 and the summer of 2017. But the new course will have exams starting in uh, summer 2018. I, I may have videos for that, I don't know, I can't really put it in the future, but um, the main thing is you know that you're either watching the right course or you're watching one that's different. And if you if you are actually doing a different course to this set of videos and there's nothing else on YouTube, have a look first. Someone else might have covered it. Um, make sure you compare the course content to make sure you know that you're not revising stuff that you don't need to know. And the things that are on your course that aren't in these videos, you make sure you learn yourself. Um, just to reiterate this point, I've just done a quick little table showing you what year you'll be in, in what, or year 10 or year 11, in what exam series, and make sure... Uh, it's really clear how they're kind of phasing in. So if you're watching these videos, this set of videos, hopefully you'll be in this category where you're doing the older course. So when I say some exam, exam series, I mean in June of 2016, that's when the exams will be. So this is the academic year of 2015, 2016. This is 2016, 2017, 2017, 2018, and so on. So you can quite clearly see from 2018 onwards, it's going to be all the new course, the older course is completely gone. So these videos have become somewhat obsolete. Um, but that's the main bit of this video. If you're revising, you know, last minute, you may want to just skip to the first topic. But um, I'm just going to quickly break down how the course is split up in case you don't know. So there's one exam, 75%. That's what I'm covering in these videos. So I'm covering all this content here in this series on YouTube. Um, it's 120 minutes of exam, two hours, which is quite a long exam for GCSEs, but. Um, you know, that's fine. Uh, 90 marks. Um, it's actually worth slightly more marks, as we'll look at in a second. Um, so I'm not covering anything to do with the controlled assessment, which is worth quite a, a lower percentage, but it's still obviously worth doing well in. But it's not the end of the world if you don't do as well in your controlled assessment. You can always bring it back in the exam, which is the main point. So when I do examples, I'm going to use these three languages, because hopefully you would well, you should have learnt one of them in classes. I'm not doing any sort of kind of teaching the practical side of things, I'm just doing the theoretical exam stuff. Um, there's also, on the example specification, at the end of it, there's an appendix where the example lists all the pseudocode, which will introduce pseudocode in the first video, but all the pseudocode um, conventions they're going to stick with. So I'll also be using pseudocode examples from there in my videos, as well as any code examples. So um, just to look at the, the grade boundaries from last year, um, from, so the first exam for this course was in June 2015 um, and these were the grade boundaries for this. I always get asked about grade boundaries and I can never really, um, I always just redirect people to the uh, grade boundary document which I've released the day before results day and just examples release it for all the subjects and it just shows you how many marks you need to get each grade and usually they're kind of broken down into exam and uh, uh, controlled assessment but this qualification is a linear one. All the older qualifications are modular, which means that they kind of have to use something called UMS to um, make up the marks. Um, but the new ones don't have a modular component, they're just linear, so this is why it's not really split up. So you kind of have to do a bit of kind of fudging the numbers to make up 
200 because it's 90 marks for the exam and 50 for the controlled assessment. So the way they make up 200 is they multiply the exam mark by 1.667, which is actually 1.6 recurring, which is if you do the exact fraction is 5 thirds, and then they add that to the raw mark from the controlled assessment to form the 200. So that means the exam is effectively um, worth 150 because you're times 90 by 5 thirds, which is 150. And the control assessment is essentially 50 marks, which makes up our percentage, uh, the ratio as we looked at before. Um, so if you want to find, if you do like a past paper and you want to kind of work out how close you are to these boundaries, what you can do is roughly compare your marks against the grade boundaries. It should be said that actually the grade boundaries change each year. They're usually roughly the same, like A star is usually about 80%, but that's not a given. If it's a really difficult exam, it will go down. If it's really easy, it will go up. Um, you need to get more marks to get an A star and with all the others too. So you can use this formula. Uh, this is just done by just uh, timesing. You can probably see where this has come from, but um, if you just times, so for example, if you want to see what an A star would be for the exam, just times uh, 0.45 to by, uh, sorry, by whatever values here. If you're looking to see what an A is, times it by 131. Uh, same for the controlled assessment, and then you can add it together to work out your total kind of mark just to keep track of it because otherwise it might be a little bit difficult. Anyway, uh, finally, uh, the main thing I'm going to sort of harp on about throughout this series is the exam board specification. So, exam boards produce this document that outlines details of the course and the course content, basically telling you exactly what they're going to ask of you. Um, it's available on the exam board website. I'd, the main tip I give people to make sure you look at it and make sure you're learning the right content. It's very easy for a teacher to skip at a point accidentally and you're going to get a question in the exam and you just won't know it. So if you if you uh, work through the specification like I'm going to do in these videos, you can't really go wrong because you know every topic that could come up. And at the start of the video, I'm going to show you the specification points for the topic. Um, I won't cover everything because there's some that are just sort of practical, like coding, and I can't, I'm not going to teach that. And it's something you can either do or you can't, to be quite frank. And there's also stuff that is relatively common sense and not really something that I'm going to teach you. I mean, this is kind of a patronizing point for me to teach. I'm not going to teach you how to work safely. Um, that's just an ex that's kind of a question you can't really revise for if it comes up. You just have to use your common sense and maybe the case study that they give. Anyway, that's the end of this introduction video. We're going to cover the actual first topic, which is on algorithms, in the next video. So, hope to see you there. Thank you.